Let me ask you one thing. How many of you have pursued scholarships? Raise your hands. Excellent. How many of you have followed competitions? Any kind of competitions? Raise your hands. How many of you won the competitions? Raise your hands. Wow, lots of winners. Lots of winners. I used to be one of you guys, right? I consider myself an overachiever. And I like to be called that. Right? Back in my university, I represented my university four times abroad in a debate competition challenge. After that, British Council nominated me as a climate champion for environmental uh, issues. After that, the US Embassy gave me the title of the agent of change for democracy. Right? After that, I won second place in Metro TV for the next Indonesian leader. Okay? After that, I won hackathon. Seriously, right? I was like, what's the correlation? <laughs> and now, many years later, I am a stand-up comedian. <laughs> totally the antithesis of all those things. Why? Allow me to share with you a little about this story, ladies and gentlemen. But before that, um, so I'm here to share with you how to embrace your inner demons. What's the correlation with all those things I have said before? Allow me to share your story. In 2012, I managed to reach the peak of my career. I was a very established comedian, right? The first one to use English, right? And I performed in front of 3,000 audience live in Senayan. Not long after, I had to leave all that because my mom was diagnosed with cancer in Malang. So I had to leave everything, go back to Malang to accompany my mom for four years, right? I lost my job, of course, yeah? There's not much opportunities becoming an English comedian in Malang. <laughs> Second of all, I broke, lost all my money for the uh, hospital, right? And I was depressed almost every day because my mom's condition getting worse and worse. And I asked myself, <laughs> what's the use of becoming a winner? All those trophies and all the certificates, but I can't help my mom, right? What's the point? And at this point, I found the answer. Right? I hit rock bottom. It made me reevaluate re my life, and I found the answer. Basically, I followed all those competitions, all those scholarships, because I just wanted attention. I didn't care about the issues. Right? I, didn't care, I don't care about environment, about democracy, about peace, about IT. Right? I just appreciate the attention. The more I win, the more I get attention. That's all. Ironically, the only thing that I can get from all those events are the only thing I can give my mom. Attention, right? At that point, I managed to unlock one demon inside of me, which is pride. I am a cocky bastard. <laughs> I, have so, I have an enormous ego, right? But now, I am happily admit it, right? I have this demon inside of me. But he's my friend now, because I admit he exists, and I to try to become friend with this guy. But you know what? It's like opening a Pandora box. Once you found a demon, other demons will appear. <laughs> he's not the only one! <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, before I continue, enough about me, let's go back to you. Have you ever heard of these sayings? This is a very cliche and classical sayings, right? An old Indian says, there are two wolves inside of you. One is bad, one is good, <laughs> right? Which character you are depends on which wolf you're feeding. If you feed the good wolf, you become good. If you feed the bad wolf, you become bad. All right, nice, right? But we're not Indians. <laughs> That's number one, all right? Okay, number two, if you feed the only one, what will happen to the other, right? If you feed the good one, the bad one will starve, and nothing is more dangerous than a starving predator, <laughs> right? If you feed the bad one, the good one will starve. So I'd say feed them both. Why don't you, right? You have the resources, and you know the consequences, right? If you feed the bad one, the good one, the bad one will implode. If you feed the bad one, the bad one, the good one will implode. You can't be all good or all bad at all times. You gotta mix between the two. 
Right? Ooh, sounds profound, huh? <laughs> so, how to identify the demons? Well, actually, it is identified as these seven deadly sins, all right? Gluttony, lust, sloth, greed, envy, and my all-time favorite, pride. Now, what is the reference for this? Actually, they have been identified since many years ago by the Catholic Church since the 6th century by the Pope Gregory, as represented in this, in this uh, painting, right, by, in 15th century. But even though they're ancient knowledge, they are still relevant and prevalent now because they become the idea of many pop culture products, like this movie. My favorite, and Brad Pitt looks damn good. <laughs> and you know it's prevalent in pop culture when Japanese made a manga about it. All right, yeah, so you believe, oh, I know that, yeah, okay. <laughs> I know that too, yeah. We live in an almost similar world. Okay. But, <coughs> not only in pop culture, also in the academical world, because the British uh, Psychological Society made a lot of journals and research about them. Even in the United States, they made a whole book about it, how seven deadly sins can be used as a, as a metaphor to explain the flaws inside the psychological world. All right? So that's proper foundation for this, even given the context of modern era. So, going back here, ladies and gentlemen, basically, what I want to show is that this thing exists. And they lie inside every one of us, all seven of them, all right? The problem is that, do you admit them as a problem or not? Because we cannot solve a problem unless you admit them first as a problem. Right? I have lived my life for many years in denial, saying I'm a good guy because I win things. Nah. <laughs> it's my ego speaking. Right? I'm just denying things. Basically, I'm an attention seeker, cocky bastard. That's what I am. Right? So why afraid to admit it? I'm not. That's what I am. I'm not perfect. I'm not bad. I'm in between. So, basically, these seven demons, I'm saying that they lie inside of you, maybe dormant, maybe active. But if you are in constant denial of them, what will happen? They will implode, right? Like what? Like this. <laughs> Sloth. Yeah? You want to rest, playing games. Sure, to what extent? Can you control your laziness, right? Because so far, 15 gamers has died because of playing games too long. Right, the most stupid reason to die. <laughs> in Indonesia, right, this lovely lady stated from her research in 2018 that 14% of our junior high school and high school students are addicted to online games to the extent they actually drop out of their schools because they spend too long playing games, right? Okay, sloth, obesity, or gluttony, ladies and gentlemen, right? Okay, they are actually the number one cause of preventable death. Look at number one till four. Those are because of unhealthy lifestyles, basically, yeah? Okay, you can totally prevent those deaths just if you don't eat too much. Okay, like the previous speaker has spoken, listen to that guy. <laughs> Wrath. I don't even need to prove this. You've seen this, <laughs> right? Have you ever questioned yourself, how come these people look so angry all the time, right? Because it's bottled anger. You live in poverty so long, in small alleys, in small house, it's going to implode one day. Not explode, implode for inside. You find an outlet, there you go, destroy everything while you can. Okay? It's just all bottled anger. Envy. Ooh, right? I envy you, you're mine. Okay? The, until the point of obsession. Okay? We are all envious. I envy you sometimes because you're rich and good looking. But hey, I keep it under control, right? I don't harm people because I'm envious. Lust. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you ladies can speak better about this. 
because you all have experienced to an extent that you become a victim of men, right? And you have my utmost sympathy. I, I'm sorry, we are pricks. But yeah, this happens because some people can't control their lust. They need the point to exhibit, ladies and gentlemen. And last, uh, greed. There you go, to the point that you need money required to build a statue against corruption. Right? Greed is an issue to the point that the issue becomes really funny. <laughs> and last but not least, my all-time favorite, pride. Yeah. Show off things, will ya? I'm better than you, will ya? Ladies and gentlemen, this happens because the demons of you can't be controlled, all seven of them, all right? They become an issue if you don't omit them and they implode, becoming something that you can control. So how to become friends with them? First, admit it, all right? We all got issues. When you say that you're fine, hi, I'm fine, no, you're not. Okay? Nobody is fine. We all got issues. We are all battling different issues every single day. Might as well as admit it. Okay? Let me share you my issues. I told you about pride. I've got two more. Well, three more actually, but I have made a total peace with the last one. So this one later. I have issues with lust. Yeah? So I like girls and I like having relationships. How do I deal with them? I keep them under control. I'm having open relationships with my partners. Okay, emphasize the plural, partners. <laughs> yeah? But I don't lie to them. Each of my partner know about the other partner. Okay? We all have contracts. Say, okay? We, I start with that, okay? You want, you want to go with me? You need to know about me, right? This is about me. Read, clause number one <laughs> until ten. So they know exactly who they're facing. So I don't have to lie. I don't have to make, make affairs. I never get call, right? I never have the idea of rape or undermining women because I'm fully satiated, right? A hungry sharks don't hunt for fish because we don't hungry anymore. There you go. That's how I maintain my lust, keep them under control because I admit they exist but they need to be kept under short leash, right? Number two, sloth. Woo, I'm lazy, ladies and gentlemen, right? To the point, I, 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 I think myself as a, as a smart person, that's why I think smart people should, should work less, because we're smart. <laughs> that's how I justify my laziness. I like sleeping so much, the first thing in my mind when I wake up is to sleep again. I like sleeping so much, when I dream, I dream of sleeping. <laughs> if I drop right now, I'm conscious, only to wake up 20 years from now, the first thing I say is that, please, five more minutes. <laughs> I like sleeping so much, all right? But I control it. I rest to the point that it won't disturb my work. In fact, in many modern offices, the staffs are given the opportunity to sleep in, in the working hours as long as they can finish their, their job under th uh, in, in time. Because nowadays, it's not about the quantity of work, it's the quality of work. If you can finish nine hours job in three hours and take the rest for sleep, why not? Right? It's the smart way of working. There you go, right? So you can actually feed your sloth while at the same time having the maximum output for your work. Have a pact with your demons, okay? Don't deny them because they will haunt you. Like how? Like, I have worked so hard, I deserve a rest. Let's go partying. And you got hang on for 18 hours. <laughs> okay, can't do your work because you don't control them. <laughs> All right? Okay, I have issues with wrath, but that was something in the past. Now, I talk about them with my friends, about my anger and emotion, right? Communication is the key, actually, to channel yourself. Give your demons an outlet so they won't disturb you. 
But that's my way, ladies and gentlemen. Your way might be different. How do you deal with your demons? Do you admit that they exist or do you deny them? Please, not the second one. Ladies and gentlemen, in the end, it should be balanced. Why is this important? Because in the end, this is the only way, I think the only way for us to make peace with ourselves. Demons, the seven deadly sins, can be your friend if you know how to control them. And I think it's cool to have demons as your friend. It's like having one of those mean rock whaler, right? But you keep them under short leash and you can hug them anytime, right? Depending how you turn the dog, the dog will not be vicious or become friendly. It's up to you. And if we can all be a better uh, person, in peace, the more we are, the less we are creating problem to ourselves, the less we are creating problem for other people and for our surrounding. But we got to begin at a personal level, which is yourself. Please face your demons so we all can live in harmony. Thank you very much. My name is Daddy Azibuan.